there's a favorite author of mine. Um, he basically says that um, at this point we have all technologies at cheap prices. Uh, so the only thing we need is the economies of scale to boost uh, solar and wind. Uh, so far, uh, I would say that we were just showing our, or say exemplifying green solutions that uh, cover for a very small percentage uh, in the energy mix. Uh, as our response to weaning ourselves off uh, dirty Russian hydrocarbons it, it is lying merely in replacing gas sources and well, alas, uh, we're investing in brand new gas infrastructures, which is the case of Romania, that will bridge to uh, carbon zero emissions in the far sighted future. Well, I mean, we are fooling ourselves. Those investments will scream out for returns on the long term, and that is 30 years, right? Yes, I mean, uh, we have several problems with new uh, gas infrastructure. Uh, and I would start with the, the problem and with the argument that actually pushes the, the uh, new gas infrastructure. And this is that because we are moving out of Russian gas, we need a uh, new infrastructure to replace this gas with uh, non-Russian gas. And the thing is, it, it doesn't work like that. I mean, gas infrastructure takes a long time to build, long time to repay. Uh, it's not exactly. just the actual physical building, but there are lots of uh, permits, uh, technologies, uh, political disagreements, and so on and so on. When uh, recently somebody was telling me, well, um, the a, a floating terminal you can build in two years and uh, we were discussing the Alexandropolis floating terminal and then he said and we've been discussing that for six years and I said well then that makes eight years I couldn't because... find anyone matching Scott who has granted you drop-in permissions I can drop in on your uh, own echo devices. Apologies, that's my idiotic um, Amazon. Just say, Alexa, drop in. Oh, Alexa. Alexa, shut up. <laughs> the, I have this Alexa, which suddenly, hearing my voice and God knows what I said, recognizing my <laughs> word that. Oh, it, it freaks me out. I will never have such a thing. I'm. But, I'm, I'm having vinyls. It, it does it very. It does it very rarely, and I don't know what to do because I hate this kind of thing. I bought it just for the microphone, for the loudspeakers. But um, uh, anyway, you you can delete it. Uh, but yeah, cut it out, um, yeah. so. I mean, basically, to build um, a, an LNG terminal takes a lot of time. To build uh, LNG import terminal, export terminal, and we have to factor in not just the physical building because this is not. Uh, I mean, even if you call somebody to, I don't know, repair your roof, you don't say the roof can be repaired in one day. You calculate how long it will take by the time this person comes and to find the money to sign the contract and all that. So uh, building even the fastest uh, gas infrastructure takes a lot of time. Then this infrastructure is not just the entry point, but you need pipelines, you need all sorts of things. And by the time uh, new infrastructure is built to supply non-Russian gas, the energy landscape will be completely different. And most of this infrastructure will end up a stranded asset. So uh, because of that, it is very sensible for public funding not to go there. And if a private company wants to take the risk on that, let them take the risk. But they don't. I mean, the fact is that nobody wants to invest in uh, specifically in Europe. And the other reason is that it is very clear to all investors that Europe is dead serious about its climate uh, um, ambitions. And uh, while many uh, companies were dismissing the climate policies of uh, uh, Europe, they learned a very hard lesson when they invested in, um, in coal, for instance, and suddenly coal started going down. 
And the same thing we're seeing now with gas. I mean, it's not that obvious like with coal, but we're seeing mm-hmm. on, on the investment side that there is a, a very, very strong reluctance by um, financial institutions and companies uh, to invest in gas infrastructure. That's why they have this very strong pressure on governments and the European Commission and all sorts of public funding to uh, to fund the infrastructure because businesses will not fund it. They will not invest in that. And that's why these two concepts of hydrogen-ready infrastructure and transitional fuel were invented in order to justify uh, gas infrastructure, which otherwise you can't justify simply from business point of view can't justify it and from public point of view you can justify it and that's why this sort of um uh, i would say fake concepts um are uh, being pushed so hard and together with them the idea that need base load um capacity and the only option for base load capacity is um is gas as a replacement of coal but base load transitional fuel and hydrogen ready are three dead ends and and fake concepts <laughs>